Hey YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps. All right, you guys, I'm excited. And I tell you the last couple years, um, I don't know, on this crafty journey, it's been harder and harder to get excited about something, but I am totally excited about this new concept to me. I have been talking about getting back into scrapbooking. The last couple years, it's just been on my heart. But what I ended up doing was not what I intended. I intended to return back to traditional scrapbooking. But you know what? <laughs> oh my goodness, I love this. I'm doing what I'm calling, um, well, I've taken a vintage scrapbook and turned it into a junk journal. Yes, and I love it for more than one reason. <laughs> I'm going to share a couple pages. I do have more completed in this book, but I'm just going to share some tips and share a couple pages thus far. But first, let me share some cards I got in. I had these on my desk for several weeks. And Mary, Marianne, I saw your email today asking if I got this and totally remembered. Oh my goodness. I had these on my desk, but they're, they were hidden by stickers, vintage stickers, and I meant to share these in, in um, one of my prior videos. So let me go ahead and do this now. Oh, I tell you. Okay, I got cards in from Elise, who is Lisey, 46, Rhonda Coleman, and Rhonda is, Rhonda's got a project. And then I got some happy mail in from Mary. I think it's Mary Ann. I'm sorry, Mary Ann, if I got part of your name wrong. But now it's all out of order. Okay, I think this one came from Lisey. I'm sorry, you guys. Once again, it's been on my desk and I totally forgot about it. But this card here came from Lisey. Look at this. I love Lisey's cards. Look at that, you guys. She probably used a cutout from a scrapbooking sheet. Got it layered with gingham. I know she loves that too. Look at the cute bow, the dots here. Very simple, right? And just washi tape right there. I think those are poppies, which is one of my favorite flowers. This is so pretty. Look at that. Thank you, Lisey. And then she has a note inside. Oh, thank you. This is probably part of her hashtag, which I need to, well, I got some stuff to mail out. So I'll be using that hashtag when I get around to mailing out some happy mail myself and cards. But she, she started a hashtag for her birthday in January that she has extended I'm going to assume throughout the year. Very pretty. Thank you so much. I love the beauty of this card. And then the next card came from... Oh, I forgot to mention too. <laughs> okay. When I opened this up, I cracked up. This is from Griffin Girl. <laughs> Did I say Rhonda? Did... Okay, I probably meant to say Griffin Girl. For some reason, though, it feels like Rhonda sent me something. Okay, but anyway, this card here, I cracked up because Natasha, that's her name, Griffin Girl, she shared this card in a video. And she stated, this was a couple months ago, I think, she stated that she was going to send this out to someone. And I was kind of wondering, and yeah, I had the audacity to leave a comment that I felt that she was going to send it to me, right? What if I was totally wrong? <laughs> but I got it. And I felt it was mine because she talked about this person loving brown and brown is my favorite color. So I thought she got to be talking about me. She got to be talking about me as if nobody else likes brown, right? But this is even more beautiful in person. Natasha, girl... I have to go back and watch your video to find out what image this is. Was this part of my hashtag angel card series? I don't remember now. This is beautiful. Look how beautiful this is, you all. Oh, this is beautiful. I smell my oatmeal. Let's see. I've eaten oatmeal 
I want to say six times out of the last eight days. <laughs> and I really need some today because yesterday was a bad day. My daughter, because I'm healing from a arm injury. So um, the day before yesterday, my husband, he ordered us food from Habit. We got home, started eating, and DoorDash arrived. And I'm thinking... I didn't know what it was because we've we've never done DoorDash before, if you can believe it. He had this big old bag. I'm thinking, is this man going to pull out a, a, a rifle and shoot me? Because we didn't order food. And I thought, well, then maybe he got the wrong address. No, my daughter, our daughter had ordered us a buffet of food, which we're still eating on from a local Italian chain called the Chico's. Oh, my goodness. So good. So anyway, I didn't have oatmeal yesterday because I had that for lunch. I'm having my oatmeal today, though, for lunch. But this card is beautiful. Look at the gold stitching. And she used different stitch lines. And then she, um, yes, wrote me a beautiful, a beautiful message with pink cardstock inside. And look at the back there. Let me show Elisa's because we're all decorating the back of our cards with our special touch and Elise. Oh, Natasha made this card January 22. I do date my cards as well. And that's how Elise's card look. Beautiful. Thank you, ladies. And I got another one. And this one here is the Happy Mail from, I'm looking for my, the envelope. Okay, let's see. I got some vintage stickers and I put them all together. Oh, here's the envelope. Duh, it was in my hand. Okay, so this comes... From, oh, no, this one comes from Rhonda Coleman. So, you know what? Okay, I was right. Pam? Mary? I just forgot her name that quick. I need to run to the P.O. box because, obviously, I didn't get yours. I knew I had something from Rhonda. Okay, and Rhonda sent me... Look at this beautiful gingerbread. Oh, you guys, did I tell you all as of a week, a week and a half ago, my gingerbread setup is no longer set up. It had been set up a year and a half, if not longer than that. I have taken it down. <laughs> this is so pretty. Oh, it's an angel. She added little fabric or puffy wings. This is so cute. And this trim. I feel like I shared these in a video. You know what? I think I did film these in a video but the video was too long so i edited it out and forgot all about it that's what it was because i remember touching and talking about this beautiful trim here so pretty this is so pretty Rhonda. and then she wrote a message inside as well and she did it for elisa's collab her um elisa's birthday collab thank you this is so pretty look gingerbread on floral paper got that shabby look going on oh thank you ladies this is so pretty thank you Rhonda. thank you natasha and thank you elise oh how beautiful all right you guys are you ready to take a couple um peek peek sneak peek Sneak peeks at some pages. You guys, I'm loving this whole oversized experience, let me tell you. Now, the first page is not done. Here's a picture of two of my vintage watering cans I procured this year. I garden all year and have been gardening for at least 30 years. And take a look. This is vintage gift wrap paper, which I'm using a lot of that in this journal junk journal scrapbook whatever i'm gonna call it but look at this you guys with the narrow watering spout i found i found two of these at a local antique outside antique fair could not pass that up and i have it sitting on sage my sage grows all year i have regular sage and i have pineapple sage all right so not going to talk a lot about these pages just yet. I'll be back. But yellow is my second favorite color. I'm working with a lot of yellow. And I'm using vintage paper tablecloths, which this one here, love, love, love it. In this book, I endeavor to use 
images from my favorite sources to curate vintage images. This girl here is by far my favorite paper doll from the vintage um, sewing patterns, which I've done videos for Black History Month the last several years, sharing some of my collection of vintage sewing patterns that have African Americans on them. That's one of my favorite sources that I go to to um, get images, and I love her. I gave her the name. Her name is Tammy. Yes, I, I'm going to name my paper dolls, and I just love this page. This came, this embroidery came from, I believe, a a curtain, and it was all white. I used my, my alcohol markers and colored that in. I like that. So this page isn't done. This page here will be dedicated to my mom, who's been deceased for 30 years. Her favorite soda was Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And you see some vintage, I got some vintage Coca-Cola and ephemera going on here. I have a picture of my mom. I'm so blessed. And I, I, I know I have it. I better have this picture. She, once again, she's been deceased for 30 years. She was holding her favorite soda. Yes, what a treasure. Priceless. I'm going to add that picture here. I've done some journaling here. So let me see. Do I want to share? I don't want to share these pages. Well, let's see. I'm going to cover up because I don't want to share too much yet. By the way, you guys, I've started another. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and share a page from this book as well. Another vintage scrapbook. I probably shared these in a recent junkin' and thriftin' haul video, but you guys look, this is ephemera itself. This scrapbook along with this one, I believe, and I have a couple other ones. These were sealed with the plastic on them, so very brand new. But look, came from Woolworth. We shopped at Woolworth and Newberry's as a child. These two stores were located in our downtown mall area, side by side. And I just love having anything that I can find with Woolworth on it, Newberries, Longs, Kmart, Mon Montgomery Wards, Sears. I found two. Well, I won't get into that right now. But anyway, I'm going to take this off because this right here, I want to make copies of this. This is so precious to me. My mom would take us. We would catch the bus because my mom didn't drive. So we caught the bus, bus 34. <laughs> Hope I never forget that. Bus 34 took us right from our home downtown and we would eat at Woolworth. They had a diner section. So we would shop and I'm having flashbacks. I want to cry. My heart is crying because um, I remember going to this store and to Newberry's, which was next door. How I wish we had a picture being there back in the day. But let me quickly just, you know, I'll share. Okay, I'll share this spread here. The idea literally evolutionized for both books over the last week. I had totally had something else in store, but I collect vintage stationery. I used to have a listing, which I'm going to bring back when I open up my Etsy shop. It's been closed for the last, what, during the pandemic, but I had a listing for vintage stationery. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I took this video down, but I shared a recent haul video, maybe a week ago, of more vintage stationery. Well, I'm a writer, you guys. I I mean, I'm a real writer with a pen and write on paper. I, I've been journaling and keeping keeping diaries and I write songs and poems and I'm doing a I'm working on a bestseller book right now. I've written scripts. I've had my hands in a little bit of everything. I write quotes. I just love to write. And what I started to do several years ago, I started this new concept for myself called Mail Myself Mail. And I shared one of these in a recent video as well. But um, I thought to use a vintage scrapbook to house my Mail Myself Mail, which I will do because I have, I don't know how many of these. I mail myself mail when I'm out of town on special days. And just like I think... 
for the election, the last election, I mailed myself mail that day. It's like a time capsule. And I've yet to go back and open up any of it. But anyway, I thought to dedicate a scrapbook to my vintage stationery. And this was the first page I did. And this is where the idea started to evolutionize. And I love it. Because I randomly... I do want to decorate the page in addition to using the vintage writing paper and envelope and whatever else came in that kit because I find boxes. Oh, you know, I should do a video comparing the different types of vintage like writing stationery, how it was, how it came when it was purchased. But this is where it evolutionizes. I, I have this antique map book and I just tore out a random page and it ended up being Mexico. So I added the the map here of Mexico and then as I was putting this page together, I had the idea, now wait a minute. I've been to Mexico a couple times. The first time I went, I was in 5th or 6th grade and I stayed 8 days. So then I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this paper to journal about my first trip to Mexico. <laughs> and I love that idea because I I do have a couple pictures, but I still remember there are some things that stand out. Though I don't remember a lot about childhood, there are some thoughts, some memories that I still retain from that trip that I do want to formalize and write it down. So I thought too, this could be a traveler's scrapbook type thing because I can write about different places I visited using pieces of vintage maps or, and, or I can just chronicle, write everyday type stuff. Like I Brown, I love it. I don't have a particular idea yet of what I want to write here. I plan on using my handwriting. I also plan on typing. I'm going to add stamping. So I have some other pages done too, but I'm, I don't want to share those yet, but I got this one going on. And then this one here, <laughs> you guys. Okay. So I want to share, oh, I picked up this so I could hide a page. Okay, I'm going to hide this girl. Or which page do I want to hide? Um, I don't want to share both of these. I'm trying to decide. Okay, I'll hide this side. And share this page here. Because I love it. Ah! This was probably the first page I did in this book. And I think I have about six pages done so far. Or almost done. But I started off with vintage lined paper in the color of pink. I do collect the lined paper, the the colored ones, and on a page I'm not going to share. Oh, you know what? Let's go back because I did share this page. Did I talk about this page dedicated to my mom? You guys, I filmed this video already. Okay, this page will be dedicated to her. This is vintage black lined paper. And back in the year, you, which I'm going to use, you use the gel pens, right? And it brings the paper, the color of the pen to life. <laughs> so I do love to work with the colored. And I have several colors I found so far, including this pink color here. So I started off, I just laid down the pink lined paper. And then, because when you get started, you need to have things to work with. And you don't want to put a lot of thought into it. I have a motto, don't think, create. What I've used a lot of thus far and will continue to use throughout this, this book is the vintage wrapping paper. Now, all of these papers, except for this one, this one came on a roll, I think. All the rest of them are the folded wrapping papers. So I spent 
I allotted myself a chunk of time to go through some packs and cut them down to size. And I have different sizes. I have this size and then I kept some of the sizes in its original size. Once I had my papers, that was like half the battle, right? So I spent some time doing that. On a different day, I went through, because three of my favorite sources to curate images, and you see an image here. This is from a Ebony Vintage magazine. I had already, a couple years ago, I had already went through and um, curated some images, made copies. So I just pulled, I pulled from what I had done already. And then I also flipped through some other pages. But anyway, I had these done already. I just made copies and I cut them down. So I'm using several of these images, different ones. I'm using images, let's see, let's go back. No, I didn't share that page. I'm using, oh, okay, I'll talk more about it. But I'm using images from the vintage sewing patterns, images from the Ebony Vintage Magazines, and images from, there's another source. Oh, I have a sizable collection of paper dolls. So I'll be using images and die cuts from that as well. But back to this page, I laid the pink down. And then I did something that's like in the junk journaling spirit. This was different for me. I have a lot of um, this bias tape, like you all do, the vintage bias tape. Now, I have a lot of these letters, too, in different colors. And I had pink on my desk. So I just used what I had next to me. I was... Um, been loving this beautiful weather. We The last week, week and a half, we have had wind. We had a lot of wind last night. It went away for a day. It came back last night. I am loving these windy days. So on a couple pages, I journaled about the beautiful weather. But I spelled out beautiful day to day and lovely. And I wrote about that along with whatever else I wrote about. But I laid the pink paper down first, and then I added some of the vintage, um, I was going to say wallpaper, but gift wrap paper. I used a rub on here. I added other elements um, and called this page done. Yeah, it's the writing that I'm focusing on, and I love the idea of using these larger pages at first it felt like it would be intimidating because let me grab if you're working with the smaller journals the junk journal the traveler's notebook size journal look this is small this is so small compared to this large real estate right found in the scrapbook but people i am loving it when you don't think and create when you have a foundation to get started with, everything else, it's it's going to come to you if you don't put too much thought into it. I'm going to end it with this last page here. And this here, oh my goodness, you guys. This is one reason why I love working with the scrapbook and repurposing, uh-oh, the scrapbook as a junk journal book. This is an ad, a copy of a vintage ad from the Ebony Magazine. And like many magazines back in the year, this comes from the 70s. It's my my old two 70s. I was born, I was a 70s baby, but an 80s kid. And I will do a page dedicated to the 80s, the 90s, Y2K. I might even do 60s and 50s. We shall see. But anyway, I love the Afro. I love all things 70s. But back then, the magazines were big. So the ads were big. And I always struggled with the idea of incorporating those beautiful large ads in my smaller junk journals they you can decrease the size but i struggled with that 
well, I don't have to now working with this oversized page. It fits perfectly. <laughs> this page isn't done. There's a pocket right here. But you guys, I love it. And I just love how this, this is so 70s. <laughs> you guys have to come back and see the completed pages. You have to come back. You have to subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you are excited at the prospect. If you've wanted to scrapbook again and I didn't know it was going to end up being a junk journal. My intentions were to do it the traditional way, but this is what we're doing today. We are memory keeping. We're just doing it different. But I love the idea to recycle a vintage scrapbook and bring it up to date, right? Modernize it with what we, a lot of us love to do. And that is to junk journal. That is to memory keep making collages incorporating the vintage images, right? You can you can still do all that. And for me, I feel like I'm scrapbooking. I really do because I am scrapbooking just in a different way. As it is HSN 24-hour craft day. Woo! You guys see the price for that new uh, heat press thing? Before I saw any shows, I speculated it would be $500. Okay, double that, a thousand. Who's picking that up? I'll be looking at it, <laughs> but I quickly wanted to share. I believe I shared this maybe several years ago. I do reuse the, okay, I still use the magnetic sheets, right? We were told years ago to take our pictures out. I still have original pictures and magnetic photo albums that look like this. What I'm doing today is, and what I've done for the last several years, I like to pick up these from the thrift store. And I house, um, I don't know how many of these I have. I have a lot of vintage stickers. We did this back in the year anyway, but I do keep sticker sheets. You see here, this one is dedicated to my girl, Sharon. <laughs> we saw her, or did you see her on the page? I don't know if I showed her, but she's in my book. This book is dedicated to all the different ads I found of her. And then I have this larger one here, which, oh my goodness. See, you guys, look at these two girls. <laughs> Double mint gum from the 70s. Ah! I, um, I'll be using her in my large book as well. But this is dedicated. Do you guys remember the... The Be A Model. I have several different ones. I remember these ads growing up because didn't we all want to be a model? <laughs> and my cousin actually looked into the Barbizon school. She called and I remember it being about $1,000 back then, which was very expensive in the 80s. But anyway, um, I do house clippings, my magazine clippings in this book. I have one for recipes as well, but I thought I would just share that. Now, if you guys like this video, if you have found new inspiration, if you're motivated to in some way, sh shape or form, get back into scrapbooking, perhaps you want to join me with using a scrapbook to junk journal why not like this video why not leave a comment why not share hey if you know anybody else who's doing something similar i want to be all up in their crafty business because this excites me these days leave their link below let others know who might be interested in hey this is for me my new way of scrapbooking once again i did not intend to do it this way, but this is how it naturally evolved. And I am loving having this larger space. Yes, I will continue to work in the other sizes, but right now I, I love, I just love having a lot of space. And once again, incorporating those larger vintage ads and then using full size sheets. I, I just love that. So be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, leave your thoughts below. And I want to thank you all for watching. Stay tuned, you all. Blessings.